Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you've been able to play some games on Tabletop Simulator by now. In this video though, we're going to look at how you can get better at making games in Tabletop Simulator. The first thing we want to do for that is tell you where you can find the game pieces, the assets that you can use to make your games with. So let's have a look at that. I'm going to start a new room, um, create single player, and I'm going to close the game's interface straight off the bat so that we have a table here. I don't really like the round table that much, so let's get that rectangular one that I like. And we have the objects interface here. So if I click on tables there and then I click on rectangle, I get the bigger rectangular table that I've been using a whole bunch already. All right. So where can you get those objects? Well, um, you know, the object app is right there, so we can open it again. We already had it open. Um, and if I click on components, I'll get a list of objects that I can use in my games. Um, and the most commonly used ones for me are definitely the deck of playing cards. So that looks like this. Um, I do like the dice that they have in there. They work really well and there's different shapes and sizes. Um, and yeah, then it pretty much comes down to using figurines. Um, they've got a couple of default ones, but I typically make my own custom figurines, um, which I'll show how to do in a bit. Okay, so now that you know how to get assets, the next thing you probably need for your board game is, well, a board. So you can use one of the default boards, which goes from backgammon to reverse. See, there's go, there's checkers. You can get a chess board. And if that doesn't suffice, well, you can make your own custom board, which I'll explain in a bit. But um, most of the time I rather just use the grid option. You can just enable the grid by going to options and then clicking on grid. And you have the option between a box grid or a hex grid, whatever you prefer. If you click on show lines, it'll actually show. You can change the color, the opacity, the line thickness, all sorts of cool stuff. You can make objects snap to the grid, which is really convenient. Um, you have the option to snap to the lines. I'll turn that on and I'll show you how the die is snapping to the line points. You can have the option to set it to center. So now the die is snapping to other points and you can even do both. So it could go all over the place and it's quite convenient if you want to position your uh, assets in a way that looks nice to a player. And if you want to have an offset, so that would mean putting it a little bit to the right or to the left, you can do that with these settings as well. And you can change the size of the grid as well. Um, you can even do it so that the X width of the, the grid is different from the, the height of the grid. So anyways, that's how you can set up a grid. And most of the time I find this pretty well, uh, pretty decent to play with. If you want to have some additional markings on the table, you can just use the draw tools that we discussed in the previous video and you can quickly draw some lines. It doesn't really snap to the grid, but I think you'll find that you don't really need the grid to actually draw these lines. Um, and you can then turn the grid off and still see those lines that you drew. So to get a board going pretty quickly, that's what I like to do. Just use the pen or use the grid and get it going. Okay, so that gives you some basic tools to start making games with. But the beauty of Tabletop Simulator is that there are about 10,000 games on there. And all those games have their own assets and people have made custom assets for them as well. So you can actually go into any other game and grab whatever assets that are in there and use them for your own game. So let's see how that works. So I click on games here and uh, you might not have as many games in here as I do from the workshop, but if you need to, you can browse and get some more. And I'm just going to go into the Hive game. So the way you do this is you hover over it and this button appears on the top right. Click on it and you can click on expand and that will open up the game and show all the assets that are in there. Now, if you remember Hive, it's this game with these bugs on hexagonal tiles. So say for your game, you want to use one of the mosquitoes or the pill bugs. You can just go in here, grab and drag, and they'll drop right into your own tabletop simulator mod. So by doing that, you can pretty much get anything. The more familiar you are with board games, the easier it is to find the exact right assets that you need. So getting assets from other people is one really great way to make your game look nicer and to get the objects that you need. Now, as you go through other people's games in search of assets, you'll find that a lot of the times the coolest assets are assets that people made by themselves. They're custom assets. So how do you go about getting custom assets in your own game? Well, let's look at a couple of examples and we'll start with maybe importing a card that has an image that we created ourselves. 
So go to the components, then go to the custom folder, and here you'll find everything that you can make custom in Tabletop Simulator. And we're just gonna drag a single card in here, and that'll give us this little interface. Okay, so your custom card has a bunch of options, and depending on what kind of custom object you're trying to make, this interface will be different. But for a card, it asks you what kind of card do you want it to be, what type. Do you want it to be like a rectangular card with rounded corners, like typical playing cards? Do you want a hex? Do you want a circle? There's plenty of options, but for this one, we'll just go with a rectangular one. Now, I prepared two images from a game that I worked on in the past called Dags of War. So this is gonna be my card back, and this is gonna be the front of the card. These images I made in Photoshop. They're just standard JPEGs. Um, you could also make a PNG if you would prefer that. I would recommend those two file types though, but Tabletop Simulator can use most image file types that you could think of. Um, the only thing you have to keep in mind when you make the cards is whatever the resolution is, so whatever the relation between the height and the width of the card is, that is the shape that the card will have. So if you make a square card, the card that you import will be square. If you make it rectangular, it will be rectangular. For this example, we use the proportions of a typical US game card. All right, so with that out of the way, let's import them. So I can't just drag them in there. I'm actually gonna have to find them. So let's see, it's D-O-W Gerald. And as I double clicked on that, it's asking me this question. Do I wanna upload it to the cloud or do I wanna upload it locally? Now, as it says here, local files do not work in multiplayer because local files are on your computer. They are not on the Steam servers. There's not on the tabletop simulator servers by any means. So if you're working with other people, they won't even see the image that you upload unless you upload it to the cloud server of Steam. So in 90% of the cases, unless you're quickly just testing something locally by yourself, you wanna upload it to the cloud, like so. And then the card will go into your cloud manager. You can open it by clicking on modding and then cloud manager. And well, this is what my cloud manager looks like right now. And I have tons of stuff in there. So if I wanna find that Gerald card, I just type in Gerald and here is my card. Um, if I wanna have the link to the, car, to, to the card as it's uploaded to the server, I only have to click on it and it will save that link to the clipboard so I can copy paste it whenever I need to. We don't need to do it right now, but we do need to upload the back. So I'm gonna do that really quickly. Let's put that on the cloud. There we go. And then it's asking me, do I want it to be sideways or not? Well, this is a card that's uh, in portrait mode, so it's not sideways. So let's import it. And there you go. We now have our Geralt of Ruffia card in the game. And as we flip it, the back actually shows our card back. If we press the Alt button on it, it will also zoom in on it. And it's pretty much working as we intended. Now, you might be wondering, okay, that's one card. How would I go about doing a deck of cards? Well, as I promised, it's gonna be different every single time for um, any kind of custom object that you're importing. So if you're bringing in a deck, you'll see that the interface is slightly different. Some things are similar, like what kind of type of card do you want? Do you want it to be a rectangle rounded or not? The face is still similar, but it's asking me, do you want unique backs and everything? Now, I'm not gonna go through the entire procedure to upload a deck, but if you click on the question mark here, it'll open a web browser window and it'll give you instructions on how to specifically bring in this type of asset. A deck actually requires you to make a sprite sheet or a sheet template as they call it in um, Tabletop Simulator. So it's a little bit more cumbersome, but it saves some memory when loading. So it has some perks, but if you don't have a really big deck to load, you can just as well um, use the method that I just showed you for now. Um, if you want more information, again, just click on the question mark. All right, so that's how you do a deck. How would you go about doing a figurine? Well, let's bring one in. So again, we can just use images and I'm gonna show you how you can just use the images from the Cloud Manager. So if I click on Cloud Manager and I click on the Geralt card here and I paste that in here, so Control V to paste, um, and card scale can be one, and I click on Import, you'll see that now I have a figurine with Geralt of Ruffia. So that's a cool way to make a more 3D kind of object for your games. If you use a PNG instead of a JPEG, um, you can actually make the image transparent. So you can have an image that has a transparent background, which is really cool. Um, I can look if I have one in here. Um, yeah, so these guys are transparent, so I'll show you how that works. So I go on custom and I select an image with a transparent background and I paste that in here. I import that and 
as you can see here, this guy has no background. So that's even cooler and it kind of looks a little bit like a miniature, I guess. Now, of course, there's one thing cooler than a figurine and that's importing a 3D model. So let's have a look at how that works. Now, if you are completely unfamiliar with 3D modeling, I'm absolutely fine with you skipping this part, but I'm just gonna show you how it works in any case, because it might still be convenient if you're bringing other people's assets, for example. So you click on object again, and it's the same procedure. Just go to the custom and bring out a model and you'll get another user interface with a couple of questions. Now, if you know 3D modeling, these questions shouldn't surprise you that much. It's just asking you for the mesh, the diffuse image, the bump or normal map, and the collider. Um, you can set some options here on how the physics of the model will respond, but basically all you have to do is drop the mesh in here and you'll have a 3D model. So let's look at what that looks like in Blender, which is my 3D modeling software of choice. So in Blender, I have this dog head that I created for um, the Dags of War game. And to export that to uh, Tabletop Simulator, all I have to do is go to File Export uh, Wavefront. Uh, so you need to save it as an OBG. And then on the desktop, I'm just gonna drop it there. You can click on Export OBG. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Then um, you go find your file. So on the desktop, Dog Head Tracker. And again, I can upload it to the cloud or go locally. I'm just gonna do it locally now because it's only for the purpose of showing you guys this and I'll probably forget to delete it from my cloud manager if I don't. So I'm gonna use local for this, but if you work with other people, make sure to use cloud here. So yeah, with all that said and done, um, the collider and then the diffuse image and everything is not really relevant right now. Under material, you can set the material like I would like a wooden dog head. You can manually change these settings as well, but this works for me. And when I click on import, I get a ginormous dog head. Um, if I hover over it, I can scale it up and down. And similar to any other object with A and E, I can rotate it. And now we have this beautiful 3D model that we created ourselves into the game. So that's pretty cool. And 3D models is just the beginning of it. If you happen to be familiar with the Unity 3D game engine, you can actually make asset bundles in Unity and just import them into Tabletop Simulator, even have them include cool stuff like lighting and other kind of effects like particles. So anyways, that's beyond the scope of this tutorial, but if you're a game developer with experience in Unity, I would definitely check that out. It's also in the custom area. So yeah, with that being said, I think you know most of the things you need to know to make your own games. Again, if you get stuck, just click on that question mark in the interface and you'll find the tutorial page that explains everything in a little bit more detail. Now, in the meanwhile, I set up a room with some uh, objects that might help you along as well. So this room is called Dr. Bob Tabletop Simulator Tutorial Assets. Again, you can find it in the workshop if you uh, don't have it yet. So go find it in the workshop under Browse click on it, click on load. All right, so in this room at the top, you'll find a number of decks of cards and all these cards have the same color for their back. Um, and every other color of the tabletop simulator player colors is on the front of the cards. So let me show you what that looks like. For example, if we take the black card, the first one is a gray card with a black back. Then we have an orange card with a black back and so forth. Um, you can log these cards, you can select the pen and then you're able to draw on them as well. And if you unlock them, then you can use them like so. So I feel that this is pretty useful for prototyping games because you just have a lot of different colors and like pretty much any combination of color back and color face are, uh, are in there. Then there's a number of 3D models. Some of them I got online, others I just created myself. For example, this peanut base is one that I made. Um, and yeah, these can just be really useful. There's uh, some meeples are in here. There's a little bridge that you can use. Uh, this one has a different pivot point from that one and so forth. You can just play around with it and see if it's useful. Um, but this leads me to another feature of Tabletop Simulator that I wanted to show off. Because if you want to take these, uh, these assets pretty much into any kind of game that you like, all you have to do is click on this back with the right mouse and then look for safe object. And you can do this with any object, not just with this back. But when you do that, it's going to ask a name for it. So just call it um, Bob's cool bag of cool stuff and save it. And I'm going to open up a game room just for the sake of example. So let's, um, yeah, I'll, um, just open up the room with the notepads. And if I go into objects now and I go into saved objects, you'll see that Bob's cool bag of cool stuff is right there. And I can just drag it into my game. And if I search the back, 
all the stuff that was in that other room is in there, the colored decks to the meeples and the bridges and all that kind of stuff. So that is how you can easily save objects from one room to the next or from one game to the next. Um, if you right click on any of these objects and you click on custom, you'll get the link that uh, was used to create this object. So if you click on that, you can copy paste it into your own objects and you can download it as well. So that's a way to make sure you never lose your assets. All right, so now you know how to make your own assets, how to get assets from uh, other people's games and how to use the default assets, right? Now there's only one more thing that I wanna show you to wrap this video up and that is how to combine assets. And it's actually really cool. So let me drag this bag out of the way real quick and search it because I'm going to try to combine two different assets with each other. So first I'm gonna get that huge peanut base out of uh, the bag and then I'm going to look for the daimyo meeple which is this guy here it's from rising sun and let's say I would like an asset a 3d model that combines both of them so I'm gonna zoom this guy or I'm gonna scale this guy up a little bit so it looks like he's standing on the skateboard like so and like yeah say I have a hexagonal game and I want this guy to take up two spaces or something like that well, you can go to the combine function and in combine, I typically just use attach, which is the first one. And all you have to do is you click on the base and then you point it towards the other object, let go. And if you grab then you'll see that now it is one object and you can move it around and this guy will now be forever on the skateboard. Um, if you change the color tint, let's see what that does. It'll only change the thing that you pointed to. So you gotta be clever on how you line these things up if you're gonna attach stuff and you're gonna need the color tint. But aside from that, it works pretty well. Um, if you wanna disconnect them, it can be a little tricky. What you have to do is you just put it on the table, preferably on the edges where I put it. And then I go back to the combine tool. And now I'm gonna click on the peanut base again, but I'm gonna point towards something that's not an asset. So the table will do. And when I do that, he'll be disconnected again and we can just use them. So that is how you combine objects, um, 3D models, but you can do it for carts as well. If there's anything that you want to glue together, this will do the job. And that'll be the end of this video. I hope it was helpful and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.